The clerk will call the roll. Mr. Whitehouse. Aye. Ms. Klobuchar. Aye. Mr. Coons. Aye. Mr. Black, I'm sorry. Mr. Blumenthal. Aye. Ms. Hirono. Aye. Mr. Booker. Aye. Mr. Padilla. Aye. Mr. Ossoff. Aye. Mr. Welsh. Aye. Ms. Butler. Aye. Mr. Graham. Yes, by proxy. Mr. Grassley. Yes, by proxy. Mr. Cornyn. Yes. Mr. Lee. No. Mr. Cruz. No. Mr. Hawley. No. Mr. Cotton. No, by proxy. Mr. Kennedy. Yes, by proxy. Mr. Tillis. Yes, by proxy. Aye. Chair Durbin, on this motion, ayes are 16, the nays are 5. The nomination will be favorably reported to the floor. Next is Adil Mangi, nominated to the Third Circuit. Does anyone seek recognition to speak on his nomination? Mr. Chairman. Senator Cruz, I, Senator Cruz, I'll take you first, and then Senator Lee and Senator Blackburn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have deep concerns about this nominee, and I would note we have talked at length in this committee about the nature of Joe Biden's judicial nominees. He is consistently seeking people who are extreme, who are partisans, and who are out of the mainstream. Today, we are voting on several judges that, whose records, quite frankly, are extraordinary. And it is consistently disappointing that no matter what a judge has done, a judicial nominee has done, no matter how extreme their record, the Democrats on this committee will vote in favor of those nominees. Mr. Mangi, served for years on the Board of Advisors of a radical and anti-Semitic law center at Rutgers. It was called the Center for Security, Race, and Rights. That center hosted an event on the 20th anniversary of September 11th, challenging the, quote, narrative regarding that gruesome terror attack. The existing narrative concerning 9-11, to the extent that there is one, is that vicious terrorists launched a cowardly attack and killed thousands of American civilians. Call me crazy, I don't think that's a narrative that needs to be rethought. It's pretty accurate in terms of what happened, but apparently the center did not think so. The panel of speakers at the event included, firstly, an actual terrorist. I'm not joking. Sami al Aryan, who in 2006 was convicted of conspiracy to contribute services or benefits to a terrorist organization, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, spoke on this 9-11 panel. The panel also featured Hatem Bazian, who explicitly called for intifada in the United States. That's not rumor or innuendo, it's on video, and it's undisputed. Is that a mainstream position? Apparently Senate Democrats think it is. To have another October 7th here in the United States. Are my Democratic colleagues okay with this? Or do they simply believe the press will not report anything, no matter how extreme these nominees are, so they can be safe? This event also featured Professor Rabab Abdul Hadi, who had hosted her own events in San Francisco, ones that platformed and featured an actual terrorist and plane hijacker, Leela Khaled. Mr. Mangi, who was on the advisory board of this center, while all of this was transpiring. Now, if this were just a single isolated event, maybe it would be a different story. But instead, the opposite is true. This sort of radical political programming was at the very core of this organization Mr. Mangi was involved in. In May of 2021, the center held an event called, quote, the 100 Years War on Palestine Teach-In, a Jewish news syndicate opinion piece entitled, quote, Hamas apologists slander Israel at Rutgers Teach-In described the event as, quote, terrorist whitewashing webinar. Among other things, speakers at the event explained that, quote, Israel has succeeded in painting Palestinian resistance as terror. 
Understand the Democrat senators on this committee are perfectly fine with that. They don't have a problem with that at all because they're getting ready to vote for a judge who served on the advisory board and saw event after event after event and didn't see anything he disagreed with because he kept serving there. On September 2022, the center held another event entitled, quote, Consistent Partiality, U.S. Foreign Policy on Palestine, Israel. One of the speakers, Peter Beinart, stated, quote, There's a deep identification among many conservative white American Christians with Israel. And it partly comes from the fact that Israel, like the United States, is a settler colonial state. The Democrats on this committee agree with that? Apparently, they're willing to vote for judges that do. On May 29th, 2021, the director of the center, Professor Sahar Aziz, signed a letter which was posted on the center's website, which read, quote, a ceasefire does not end the colonial conditions of structural violence and inequality that Palestinians live under. The letter went on, quote, the Palestinian rights to freedom, security in their homes, to return, self-determination, and to be free of violent occupation are well established under international law. The language of both-sidedness of timeless or religious conflict with moments of escalation erases the military, economic, media, and diplomatic power that Israel, an occupying force, has over Palestine. The most shocking part of this statement reads, quote, we are in awe of the Palestinian struggle to resist violent occupation, removal, and erasure, and the expansion of Israeli settler colonialism. Well, after October 7th, are Senate Democrats in awe of that? We'll find out with their vote in a moment. I asked Mr. Angie. Did he agree with these statements? Specifically, did he agree or disagree with Professor Aziz? And I have to say, his, his answer was reminiscent of Sergeant Schultz and Hogan's Heroes. I know nothing! Who's she again? I asked him, did he agree with Professor Aziz's statement, whether Israel was an occupying force in Palestine? And he refused to answer. He said... It was too complex. Let that sink in for a minute. I have to say, I kind of wondered if he was auditioning to be president of Harvard. He just needs context to know whether the Hamas terrorist or the IDF are more problematic. He had the opportunity to denounce this event, to denounce these statements, to denounce this center, and he didn't do it. He just said, nope, I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything about it. Nope, too complex. Oh, I, I have no idea. I have no views at all. He also tried to give this committee the impression that his connection with the center was extremely limited. What center? No, no, I was just on an advisory board. I don't know. I, I have no idea what they're doing. Mind you, look, it's possible. I don't know, but it's possible he didn't know about this event celebrating terrorists on 9-11. It's possible he didn't know about the event before it happened, but you know what he didn't do? He didn't resign after it happened. He didn't say, whoa, whoa, I didn't know this is what you guys were doing. Nope, nope, he was perfectly fine. And by the way, they kept on doing these events over and over and over again. But he wasn't just on the advisory board. He was a donor. He gave $6,500 of his own money, wrote it to the center. But that's not it. He didn't just give his own money. He also went to his law firm, Patterson Belknap, to help get the center an additional 13000 So nearly twenty grand. And mind you, what Mr. Mangi wants to tell this committee is, yeah, I helped raise nearly twenty grand. I gave 6500 myself. I was on the advisory board. But you can't blame me for anything. And mind you, he could have done what some of Biden's nominees do which is take their record and run away from it, denounce it, say I was mistaken, I was young. No, he didn't say any of that. Instead, he just said it's too complex, he can't give an opinion. He didn't denounce any of this. And by the way, who recruited Mr. Mangi to the center? That would be the director, Sahar Aziz, the same woman 
who described Israel as an occupying force, quote unquote, that engages in, quote, settler colonialism. The Jewish Federation of Greater Metro West New Jersey has stated that Aziz, quote, regularly and consistently promoted vile anti-Semitic propaganda. The Senate Democrats agree with that? Quote, vile, Semitic anti, uh, vile anti-Semitic propaganda? Well, we're going to find out, and there's no surprise. Senate Democrats of the Russian Politburo, da, da, that's how you vote no matter how extreme the nominee. I understand when your party's in power, it's expected that you vote for most of your president's judicial nominees. Many of us on the committee were here all four years Donald Trump was president. We had a number of nominees. I voted for most of those nominees. I understand that. I'm not expecting Democrats to suddenly start voting against a ton of Democrat nominees. But Joe Biden and this White House are seeking out radicals. And repeatedly, when, there were president, when President Trump made nominees who we deemed outside the mainstream, we said, no, that's not going to cut it. And we actually exercised advice and consent, the constitutional authority of the Senate. I do not understand why Senate Democrats believe they have no responsibility and why they're willing to rubber stamp these nominees. But I would urge every member of this committee to vote against this nomination. <clears throat> Before recognizing another senator from the Republican side, I'd like to make a statement. It's been my honor to be on this committee for more than two decades. This is one of the best committees on Capitol Hill in terms of the opportunity to address issues of the moment and to make a difference in the selection of lifetime appointments for judicial nominations that will impact this country for years forward. I've sat through hundreds and hundreds of these nominations. Under President Biden, it's been close to 200 already. And in the past, like numbers in previous years. I will tell you what happened in this committee, the Senate Judiciary Committee on December the 13th, 2023 to this nominee is a new low in this committee, a new low. What is it about Adil Mangi? that attracts such criticism. We know what the starting point is. He would be the first Muslim American to be appointed to serve on the circuit bench. That's an amazing honor. There are only three other Muslim American federal judges and he would have the highest rank among them. And we know because of that he is a target, a target for things that he's done in the past. But like every other nominee, he has to let his life work speak for itself and answer the questions of this committee. So what is this man and why should we be concerned? You've just heard a presentation, a suggestion that because of his background, he is likely to be either anti-Semitic or a terrorist because he's a Muslim American. Anti-Semitic or a terrorist. He said things over and over again during the course of the hearing where he had, could not have possibly been twisted to say that he is anti-Semitic. But don't take my word for it, a partisan supporter of President Biden's nominee. Think of one Jewish organization in America that you might turn to to ask, what do you think? Is this man's background or statements anti-Semitic? I think it might be the Anti-Defamation League, ADL. We all know them. They've been around a long, long time. Let me read the letter that they wrote to this committee and every member after the questioning which you've just heard and similar questions from other Republican nominees. As the leading anti-hate organization in the world whose mission is to stop the defamation of the Jewish people and to secure justice and treatment for all, ADL is compelled to speak out about the inappropriate and prejudicial treatment of Adil Abdul Mangi, a nominee for U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals during the Judiciary Committee hearing on December 13, 2023. 
During his confirmation hearing, Mr. Mangi was subjected to aggressive questioning unrelated to his professional expertise or qualifications. Rather, he was forced to provide responses to a wide range of inquiries regarding his views on global strategic considerations in a manner that inappropriately politicized these issues and raised serious questions about pretext and bias. The ADL, ADL goes on to report as follows. Just as associating Jewish Americans with certain views or beliefs regarding Israeli government actions would be deemed anti-Semitic, berating the first American Muslim federal appellate judicial nominee with endless questions that appear to have been motivated by bias toward his religions is profoundly wrong. Hate, bias, and bigotry have no place in government, especially in the hallowed halls of Congress. When nominees approach a congressional hearing, their religion, heritage, race, gender, or any other protected identity characteristic should not be the subject for political fodder. This was an attempt to create controversy where it does not exist, the ADL writes. ADL urges leaders to refrain from fueling discrimination and hate and urges the Senate, Senate to offer Mr. Mangi a fair vote based on his qualifications and fitness. That wasn't the only Jewish organization. Scores of Jewish organizations have written to us complaining about the way he was treated and supporting his nominations. And here's what the American <coughs> Jewish Committee said. Mr. Mangi, who would be the first American Muslim to serve in this role, affirmed his belief in Israel's right to exist, his abhorrence of terrorism, and any justifications for it, and outright rejection of anti-Semitism from the American Jewish Committee. Let me also report, if I can, that at the end of his questioning by Senator Cruz, I asked Mr. Mangi if he would want to give a complete answer. Here is what he said about the incident involved, the event that has been highlighted over and over again. I'll answer your question very directly, Senator Cruz. I will condemn without equivocation any terrorism, any terrorist or any act of terrorism or any defense of any act of terrorism. And this event, I don't know this event, Mr. Mangi said. I don't know anything about this event or who these people are. I've never heard of them. If someone on there is a terrorist, I condemn them. He said that under oath unequivocally. Did you hear that in the response by Senator Cruz? You did not, I'm sure. And so it comes down to the bottom line. Do we have the courage to stand up and say this was wrong the way this man's been treated? Do we have the courage to say that assuming that everyone of the Muslim faith in America is a suspect terrorist or anti-Semitic? I hope we do. Senator Lee? Mr. 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 Chairman, I, Mr. Chairman, I, I deserve a right to respond to that. Well, you'll decide that, but I'll decide, Senator well, Lee's You've right impugned my character, and you made an accusation I read that an was ADL a vicious lie. I'm going to quote from you what you said about me. You said that I had just asked a question, and here is a quote from you, Mr. Chairman, quote, that I had said he is likely to be anti-Semitic or a terrorist because he is Muslim. Now, you have just impugned my character by making a false accusation, and I will say it is disgraceful. Did you respond to any of the substance of what I said? No. You just attacked me and called me a bigot, and you responded by stating deliberate falsehoods. You said he would be the first Muslim. Well, you know what? I understand. De excuse me. I, I have a right to defend myself when you impugn my character in a way that is a new low for this committee. You did not dispute any of the facts I said about the organization that he was an advisor of, he was a donor of, he raised money for. Instead, you said he'd be the first Muslim on the federal court. Well, no, that actually is not correct. And, and in fact, that. Mr. I Chairman, said he'd be the first in fact, judge. So uh, the Democrats don't want to defend the substance. So now they're screaming Islamophobia. And I understand playing the race card when anyone disagrees with the Democrats, I they scream by racist. the ADL letter. But Senator Lee. He, here are, no, I'm going to defend myself because under the Senate rules, you have impugned my character in a way that is blatantly false. And let's just respond with facts, with substance rather than invective. Just recently, Zahid Quarashi was nominated by President Biden, was confirmed by the Senate. Like Mangi, Kwashi is a Pakistani American. He's a Muslim. And he was nominated to serve the people of New Jersey. However, 
unlike Mangi, he doesn't have association with a radical anti-Semitic group. He doesn't have association with whitewashing terrorism. Rather, Kwashi served in the army. He was deployed twice to Iraq. He worked for the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, and he served as a federal prosecutor. And he received 83 votes in the United States Senate for confirmation, the second most under Joe Biden, second only to a nominee from Texas, whom John Cornyn and I recommended. And so it is not the fact that, that Mr. Mangi is a Muslim that is his problem. It is the fact that his record is extreme. And by the way, if you want to look to Jewish organizations, the Zionist Organization of America has submitted a letter to this, this committee opposing the nomination. The Coalition for Jewish Values has submitted a letter to this committee opposing the nomination. Stop anti-Semitism, an anti, a nonpartisan organization has voiced their concerns with Mr. Mangi's affiliation. I want to introduce into the record, I ask unanimous consent to introduce into a record an article from the New York Post entitled, Biden Judicial Nominee Draws Scrutiny Over Ties to Controversial 9-11 Memorial Event. I responded with substance and fact, and you responded with insults and invective that ignored the substance that Mr. Mangi deliberately associated with a consistently anti-Semitic organization, and yet Democrats are perfectly happy for him to be a federal judge. I stand by the statement that I read into the record from ADL, and I also stand I by the I quote from you was not from ADL. I stand by the record uh, that I read it into the record, the statement from ADL, and I also stand by what was said under oath by Mr. Mangi after you finished trying to associate him with this organization, that he had no connection with it. Senator Did you just Lane, say he had no connection with this organization? Is, no is that seriously what you said in this hearing? He was on the board of advisors, he was a donor and raised money for no. him, and you just said he has no connection with him? See, you twist this situation. M Mr. Chairman, you just said he has no connection with this organization. Is, that, is that your view in the view of Senate Democrats? read his statement to you. Is that your view that he had no connection with this organization? Senator Lee. Okay, you're refusing to answer because it's obviously indefensible and false. Senator Lee. Mr. Manji, 